Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cisco Optics Podcast, where we talk about pluggable optics for networks. After you plug the optic into the switch, router, or server, you're not done. You still have to plug in a fiber optic cable. What does this fiber cable infrastructure look like? It's a lot more sophisticated than you might imagine. This is episode nine, and we start a new conversation with Brian Kelly of Panduit. I've worked with Brian for a number of years because Cisco and Panduit have basically the same customers, even though we don't make the same products. Cisco is a network gear provider, and Panduit is a fiber cable infrastructure provider. You need both the hardware and the fiber cable to complete your network. We begin our conversation with his background, and then we get into fiber cable infrastructure and connectivity. Brian Kelly joined Panduit in 2012. In 2014, he joined corporate R&D as a solution architect. Prior to joining Panduit, he worked for 14 years in the telecommunications and data center co-location industries. Currently, Brian manages Panduit's network architecture team, which develops reference architecture content for the data center and enterprise businesses. In addition, he manages the Panduit Labs network, which provides secure connectivity and resources to their labs in Tinley Park, Illinois. Brian has written well over 20 technical papers that have been published on the Panduit website as well as partner websites. Brian owns a bachelor's degree from Illinois State University and a master's degree in business administration from Keller Graduate School of Management. We've got lots to talk about. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast. It may show up as the Cisco Podcast Network, which has other great podcast series as well. Check out our blog at blogs.cisco.com and search on hashtag Cisco Optics blog. All one word, no hyphen, and no spaces. You'll find podcast notes and links there too. For our YouTube playlist, go to youtube.com and search on Cisco Optics. And for product information, go to cisco.com slash go slash optics. And now join me as I talk with Brian Kelly. Brian, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Pat? Good, good. Good to talk to you again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's been a while in person. Uh, you know, we talked a lot on the person. phone. but Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, that's such a, a 2019 thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's so 2019. <laughs> and then, and then we're gonna go retro, hopefully. Yeah, soon. hopefully we go back, back in to person. 2019. Yeah, seriously, yeah. it's kind of crazy. So, um, for our listeners, uh, can you just give like a brief introduction of like who you are, um, what you've been doing in your career? And, um, yeah, yeah. If you don't mind starting with that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Brian Kelly, I, uh, I've been in the industry for, I hate to date myself, but 22 years now. So, uh, started in 99. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm the manager of network architecture research for our corporate R and D at uh, Panduit corporation. And, uh, you know, I, uh, like I said, I've been in the industry for a long time. I've worked a lot of different jobs in the industry. I started in telecom uh, back in the early days and uh, worked uh, in web hosting for a long time and co-location and, uh, and moved into the, uh, the infrastructure side about 10 years ago. Now I've been uh, with Panda for roughly 10 years now. So, uh, so Panda was your entry into the infrastructure side? Yeah, um, sort of. Uh, I actually worked with a lot of Panduit um, equipment and and uh, and infrastructure in my previous job, but um, yeah, the, into this industry, yes, that that would be my first. Okay, and so that was you said ten years ago. Did you say? Yeah, about ten years ago. Yep. Okay, and have you always had the same type of role or the same department? Uh, at Panduit, I actually have had a very similar role. Uh, I started out in our um, working for our business unit, and uh, about seven years ago, I moved into our R and D department. Uh, so, oh. I mean, my role was basically the same, uh, but uh, the uh, department that I was working for just kind of changed. Okay, and and how would you characterize that role? So uh, basically, what I, what I do is, uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm a manager of uh, several engineers uh, for R and D, and we we actually we create a lot of content for Panduit for our marketing side uh, and more of our like technical marketing. So, um, you know, thought leadership pieces and uh, ordering guides, the the more complex, uh, you know, ordering information. 
but we also uh, innovate as well. So um, later, uh, I'll talk about one of the innovations that uh, that my team has uh, come up with that's going to be coming out soon uh, with Panduit. So it's pretty cool. Very cool. So we'll get like a first look, right? Yeah, yeah, actually. Our first, I guess a first pre, pre-launch. Listen. Yeah. More like a listen since there's no video. Yeah, yeah, there won't be no video. So you mentioned Panduit is an infrastructure. Can you Can you describe more what that means? Sure. Yeah. So we, you know, uh, Cisco, you know, provides the the switches and the routers and the transceivers and the firewalls and everything. And all those devices have to be connected somehow. And what Panduit provides is all that connectivity that connects, you know, transceiver to transceiver, but also the cabinets, the pathways, the uh, the power infrastructure, the PDUs, the, you know, everything that you need to uh, to operate a data center uh, outside of the switches and and then transceivers and and uh, active equipment. So basically, if I understand um, maybe some of our cus- our mutual customers' perspective, basically, if they go to a company like Cisco and a company like Panduit, then those two vendors complement each other's products so that they can build out an entire data center. For instance, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when I when I was uh, early on, when I when I worked with Cisco, uh, one of the engineers told me, you know, he said, "We we sell the the switches and the transceivers, and you make the magic happen in between," <laughs> uh, which I thought was kind of funny. But uh, yeah, you, you know, that magic is is pretty complex sometimes, and and like you said, uh, you know, Panduit and Cisco working together really complement each other because we don't compete on anything. Like we're we're the magic in between the transceivers, uh, and and of course, you guys sell the transceivers and the and the active gear. Yeah, and um, I think I've heard. I don't know if it was in our conversations, but maybe in other conversations that within our customers, it's not always the same buying center that's looking at the infrastructure and the network gear from like Cisco. Is yeah, that, it, it, how you it, understand it, it, as well. Yeah, it's absolutely. Um, you know, I've heard that quite a bit. You know that uh, a lot of times the the network team <clears throat> or IT is is specifying the the uh, the equipment from Cisco that they're purchasing, uh, and then a lot of times it's like a global real estate or um, you know more of a operations that's purchasing the uh, you know the infrastructure for the data centers. Uh, yeah, you know, and it varies. Sometimes it's the same parties, but a lot of times it's it's like that where it's the network, the network folks are uh, specifying the uh, the active equipment, and then somebody else is doing the uh, you know the infrastructure in between, which can really cause issues. I mean that uh, yeah, know, it's, and, it's and, complex and, enough as it is. And I think I've heard some uh, complaints that you know the infrastructure is laid out like physically laid out installed first and then and then the networking people get started and then they find yeah. that oh with the new generation of optics you know the yeah. the prices and the infrastructure may may not be applicable yeah that's absolutely true um you know it's a lot of times you know you you may be uh, it may even be like brownfield with the infrastructure and greenfield with the networking equipment and they just think, well, no, it worked before, right? It'll work now. Well, that that doesn't always uh, play out very well. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of variation in the way that the customers operate. But uh, the uh, at the end of the day, like your infrastructure is a, a very important piece because you can have the best oh, yeah. equipment in the world, and if you can't connect it, it doesn't it doesn't work. Uh, which exactly. you know, at the end of the day, is costing you money. So, yep. All right. So, um, just so people understand how, you know, why we're talking today, um, let's just go through what, what work we've done in the past. I, sure. I was trying to remember when did we start? I think, wow, it must've been something with the, the 40 gig by die or something. Cause that's, yeah, I think so. I think it was so much activity yeah. going on. I know <laughs> it's like so many things I was like trying to think. Yeah. I think it was with the, probably yeah, with the 40 gig by die. Um, and that was prior to the 4100 by die, right? Yes, um, definitely. 
Yeah, so this was just and, the 40 only by day. And uh, I think originally we were working on the extended reach with the signature core. Uh, oh, so yeah. 100, okay. 150 meters. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that was. I think that was the first thing. And I know we did and some content around that. Yeah, and I want to say that's maybe six years ago. Does that sound right? Probably. I was going to say, yeah, around 2015, because I think what Bidai came out in uh, 2014, maybe. Yeah, that's probably um, about right. 2015, 2014. 2014 yeah. Might have, might have been... Uh, I don't remember. It's a bit yeah, of a blur. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah All right. Definitely. And uh, yeah, we've done a lot of stuff since. Uh, you know, with um, you know, with uh, forty one hundred by die. You know, we just did a whole set of uh, ordering guides uh, for forty gig, for one hundred mm -hmm. gig, for four hundred gig, for uh, forty one hundred, four hundred breakout. Uh, with yeah, different that's, options. That's up on both Cisco.com and Pandua.com, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a there's actually a a, a, a specific page that we have at uh, at Pandua.com backslash Panduit Cisco Fiber is the uh, all one word is uh, the specific alliance page that we have for all the fiber content that we've created. So I was thinking because a lot of our listeners, I believe. I don't have 100% confirmation, but I think a lot of our listeners are more, uh, because it's a Cisco podcast, they're more on the networking side and they may not be as familiar with the infrastructure uh, terminology and even some of the basics. So yeah. I wanted to ask, what what are some of the very common questions that you might get from, maybe not from people who know your stuff really well, but yeah. I don't know, if you ever rub shoulders with people on the networking side, people who work with the transceivers more, or maybe even not even the transceivers, just, just with like Nexus switches, for instance. Yeah. Hardware and stuff. What you know, I think um, very common questions, uh, you know, just like in connectivity, uh, what is connectivity? <laughs> like, okay. uh, well, it, place to start. It, so uh, basically uh, it's kind of the magic that happens in between, like the guy was saying, or uh, that I was telling you about earlier, but you know, basically, mm -hmm. um, you know what it's going to be is the the connections that are made from the transceiver through uh, patch panels through structured cabling to another patch panel to uh, another patch cord to the other transceiver so like basically the um the fiber you know the channel of fiber that goes all the way through that provides you know the the avenue for the light to travel along between transceivers so you know what what are some common questions like I've heard of like what what is an LC versus an MPO connector, and and basically uh, you know what it is is an LC connector is it's the Lucent connector is it it's called um, is a duplex so it means it has two fibers and uh, those two fibers connect into the transceiver on each side. Uh, the MPO connector, which stands for multi fiber push on connector. Uh, and it's also known as an MTP, uh, which is a mechanical transfer push bowl. It's just a trade name that US Connect uses. But uh, th those connections come in 12, 16, 24, 48, and 72 fibers. So uh, 72? when you hear a term really? like MPO12, that's an MPO connector that has 12 fibers. If you ha hear MPO16, that's an MPO connector that has 16 fibers, and it's it's slightly larger than a uh, an LC connector. So an LC connector only has two fibers, um, but the the head of that connection is is fairly good size. I mean, it's um, it fits into a um, an SFP form factor, which um, you know, that's probably another question that comes up quite a bit. What's the difference between SFP and QSFP? SFP is a, a little bit smaller form factor uh, that goes into a switch that transceivers go into. Uh, and then QSFP is a little larger. And that's generally where you're going to see the MPO because it's just a little bit wider um, and it needs a little bit more space to connect. And the, these so. two connectors, LC and MPO, they look totally different right there's no oh, way you yeah, can mistake yeah. One the other yeah you would you would you wouldn't uh you wouldn't mistake uh you know one for the other one's like more of a 
kind of like a square rect, rec, I should say a rectangle. Uh, and, and one has kind of like two prongs coming out of it that, uh, go into the transceiver. And you mentioned the MPO goes up to 72 fibers. Yeah. Like who, who uses that and for what? Uh, mostly in structured cabling. So like, um, you could break out 72, uh, fibers to multiple 12s or 24s. Most of the connectors that are used for patching would be like 12, 16, or 24 going into a transceiver. And but when you, when 12, you say structured cabling, what, what do you mean by structure? Yeah, sorry. Structured cabling is basically the, um, the cabling that goes between patch panels. So that'll be your long run. And what we call those is trunks. So uh, an MPO trunk is basically like a fiber that you're going to run uh, multiple fibers over from one patch panel to another patch panel. So that's kind of like the, they call it structured cabling because it's it's going to stay there for a long time. Patch panels, okay. uh, uh, you know, provide the, the, the connectivity from the structured cable, but patch cords go into the patch panel and then to the equipment. So the patch, patch panels are meant to be more flexible and changeable if needed? Yeah, the patch panels themselves uh, can be changed out um, and the modules within those patch panels can be. Uh, but usually you're going to keep those pretty pretty stable. The patch cords can be changed out though you know, very easily because a patch cord is, is fairly affordable, uh, inexpensive. And uh, you know, it, it, if it stops working, you can just replace it. If you have to replace a structured cable, it's a big deal because... Um, you know, they're very expensive. They might run for a hundred meters or, you know, sometimes even longer than that. And, you know, you have to basically rerun a whole hundred meter cable that might be, you know, thousands of dollars, uh, not only for the cable, but for the labor to run that too. So. And where, uh, where would these run? Would they be in cable trays hanging from the ceilings or would they be underneath the floor? Yeah, I mean, you can do it a multitude of different ways. Uh, um, a lot of people use um, a product that we we have a fiber tray product called Fiber Runner, and uh, basically, it's a uh, you know, a, it's a plastic tray that that uh, protects your fiber uh, from the elements and from back, you know, I don't want to say backhoes, but like, you know, just anything that could run into it and potentially damage the fiber because the fiber is somewhat you know, um, you know, destructible. It's it's somewhat brittle, so you want to make sure that you protect it as much as possible. Oh, I, I was thinking inside a data center, but you're also talking about fiber that goes under the ground. Yeah, I mean, uh, even in the data center, like if you did say if you had it like in a basket or something, um, you know, it there's potential that you know something could fall or you know just just random acts could happen and, and damage your fiber. Uh, so like you, you try to protect the fiber as much as possible. Copper within the data center is far more, uh, it's far more durable, but it, it doesn't go as far. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's why you don't really see too much copper anymore in structured cabling. Because the data rate keeps increasing and yeah, the data rate uh, is getting so high now that the copper just, you know, like for instance, with uh, you know 400 gig, uh, they we have a product called a direct at attached copper cable. Uh, it can only go two meters, uh, so you're talking about very very short uh, connections. So it's yeah, you know, so it really uh, changes the game. Yeah, basically a server is from top of rack switch or something. Yeah, basically it's a product that you're going to use from server to switch. Hey, speaking of copper. So That was the first part of my conversation with Brian Kelly. Next time, we'll get into different types of cables. Subscribe to this podcast, and we'd really appreciate you helping to get the word out. Share this with friends and colleagues that come to mind when you think of network technology and optics, and leave a review on Apple Podcast, formerly known as iTunes. We're also on all the other major podcast platforms. You may see the Cisco Podcast Network come up when you search for Cisco Optics Podcast. That's where we live, and you can find other great podcasts there, too. Also check out the Cisco Optics blogs at blogs.cisco.com and search on hashtag Cisco Optics blog 
no spaces and no hyphens. We also have educational videos on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com and search on Cisco Optics. Thank you for listening. This is Pat Chow, product manager at Cisco Optics. The next episode is part two of my conversation with Brian Kelly. Until next time. Mm-hmm.